sign in. And so, um, I should be properly back now. Here we are just rolling over our scolder whelps, taking their ears and meat for reasons that I don't even know. And an axe. Take a look at the wall. Think we could get through? I do think we could th get through, but, um, I'd rather go this way and uh, have hmm? you do your n sneaky guy thing. Worth a look. Each one of these traps is either 15 or 45 experience. I kind of, you know, I'm surprised that there isn't like a way to get past them that doesn't trigger the traps. It's just all of them Worth are trapped. A look. But uh, that's fine. That's a lot of trap disarming. I'm here. But I'll take it. Seems good. Hey, that's all. Hmm. Fresh air in here. I think we found an exit. Sounds like the storm passed, too. Spiders. Fresh air in here. I think we found an exit. Sounds like yeah. a storm path. It's two. Spiders ain't got nothing. More spiders. Bigger spiders. Hmm? I'm attacking my rogue. like I checked Helms earlier and I think that it seems like they basically just do nothing. Well, at least not at this level. Maybe later on they do something. A rapier. The gems that I picked up seem to not actually go anywhere into my inventory, so that's interesting. I could scout ahead, see what's around the corner. Mm, this is quite clear up here. Symbol. I'm pretty sure I saw it on one of the tiles back there. Maybe this disables some of the traps. Oh yeah, you're probably supposed to look at these and then move through the traps without... Well, if you can just disable them so easily, then yeah, I don't know. And I'm not gonna... Get you hung up on it. Stand to Bruise victory. And the pots. Which is slow. And uh 
doesn't have reach. Hmm. Where'd that slime come from? for the pause they're still recovering from this cold a gym fills the other hmm, where's this gym gonna be I'm gonna run up here run up here so we could go back to check yeah I guess I should have fully explored down here earlier after all but basically, he was saying, oh, there's going to be traps or a fight or something when, whenever he does that little sound tutorials uh, call. And now we're going to go at it, whatever it is. Standing back this time. Hmm. Nothing down here. It's not any loot at all. It's a complete dead end. As far as I can tell. Hmm. I missed something somewhere. Let's see, come back here. Maybe it was back this way. Oh, hey. There we go. Tattered journal. I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice, and I've got my hands on a genuine and within artifact. Hello Rabbit said he was pretty it was a pretty nothing as far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins. But if he's right about this gym leading to a hidden treasure, then it's worth taking a sneaking past a few painted elves. I'll head out this morning. Then it's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. So we already found the relief, now we were just trying to find the gem. And now we've done so. Alright. There's one more ooze. Minor cloak protection and amethyst. Oh, I see. 
So it's actually indicating that things go in the stash. Or something like this, but it seems like, I don't know. Hmm. Seems like you can't get things back in the stash, so that's curious. There we go. Just gonna move this up here. You can keep your lock picks. Um, beer here. What is she attacking with right now? I'm here. Nothing. She has no weapon equipped. All right. I'm here. All right. Let's blow this joint. See what else is out there in this crazy mixed up world. Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of the chiseled outer and metallic veins, ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst is what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. The figure closest to the machine stands out among them. A thick gray beard frames a face otherwise hidden beneath a metallic mask. His faded robes are embroidered with a runic language unlike anything you have ever seen, and he wears a strange black headdress with two protrusions that jut out like the wings of some malevolent creature. Oathbinder, bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet, and the air is still, then all at once it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision, and you're knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land, and pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black, unconscious void. 
You open your eyes to a different place another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with outer and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end, a great pillar of Adra pierces the floor from below, its shimmer texture giving the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you have just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions. Pressing questions, troubling questions, questions that must be answered, or... Or, at the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick gray beard and ceremonial robe, crowned with a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. No, my red shirts. You awaken to find your malaise is broken, only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through your periphery, but when you turn to look, you can see no sign of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, in an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures of the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and, blown, and blood replaced by cinders and ash. The man who loved them is nowhere to be seen. Hyoden and Kaliska lie bloody on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted and naturally in death. You are alone and far from help. Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. But I got a level, I'm so here. it's not all bad. Let's go athletics. Deal with this max fatigue. Oh, so it gets more expensive each point you give. So you can kind of do, well, I don't know, 30% is probably worth two points. And then for three, I can uh, do like, I get it from here, uh -huh. yeah. One into survival, one into lore, and then I'll go and put a, uh, mm, one rank in stealth. No, 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 no. Mechanics. There we go. I don't know. Mechanics seems pointless. There's literally nowhere else to put the point. Unless I take it both out of these and then just throw it into the paddocks and say, okay, I'm done with it now. Looks like I have a ton of options here. Okay. Rapid recovery seems pretty good. It's just a passive, get more endurance. Sounds good. All right. Absolutely. Battle app. Yeah, I'm so sad that you are dead, Yoden, and, well, I'm actually kind of sad about Kaliska, 
she was like my my buddy she was my boo she was my twinsie but now she's gone forever oh i need a torch don't i but yeah i don't know about the rest of the stuff i don't want my inventory bought oof how much is this gonna sell for 40. yeah each of these is 40. If I ever find someone to sell stuff to. And so now if I click this one, I'm full inventory, so I think it's gonna Well my guess is that it's in the stash. But honestly I have no idea if that really worked. But okay. Let us explore this world. That all seemed perfectly normal. Totally natural. Nothing to see there. That's that's uh, completely what I expected to see right there. Right? Time to go to Veilwood. Perhaps rest is in order? Hmm, she sounds tired. But should I really rest or should I keep adventuring? All these plants. Need all the plants, even though I don't actually know what I can do with them. Location discovered bear cave. Well, if I'm gonna go in here, I probably should save first in case I get wrecked. Let's see what happens. What do you know? There's a bear. He looks big. Did he just one-shot me? Yeah, I think he just one-shotted me. So you know what? I think I'm not going to fight that bear right now. I'm just going to I'm going to give him a chance to survive on his own Absolutely. for a while. Seems like a, you know, he's just a natural creature. He doesn't need me to come you in. You must and, gather your party before venturing forth. He doesn't need me to be interrupting his life, yeah. That was clearly a menace. I'm Why does here. it say I have nothing in my inventory? That's really concerning. What was that? Currently, I have to go across this bridge to get to Gilded Vale. Oh, the Vale. Hail and well met. On your way south, is it? I have to say, don't see too many Omawa out this way. We headed to Defiance Bay. Lots of work on the harbor, I hear. Yeah, it sounds like a better idea than going to Gilded Vale. Why would anyone want to go there? It's just, you know, a Vale that's gilded. There's a strange machine up north, what's up with that? You'll want to keep clear of those, whatever you saw. Strange things always crop up around in Gwythin sites. I don't doubt those people are up to no good. But the Glan Fathans deal with it. They don't take kindly to trespassers, whatever their intentions. And there's enough to worry about in these woods as it is. 
I, we came across a bear in the cave of the north. Really? Really? A bear, you say? Never would have guessed. Got the better of a friend of mine. I only just made it out with my life. I think the bear got eaten, and this guy's clearly not in. That's what his, his name says right there. Alright. Let's move on. To Gilded Vale. And maybe somewhere to rest. Oh, now that's a nice looking tree there, yeah? Really strong branches. You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. That's the most macabre way to greet someone. Are you mad? No wonder this place looks half empty. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever conceived a hollow-born child? What are you talking An about? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn, just southwest of here. All this menacing stuff is coming from a guy wearing pink boots, man. That's... that's intense. Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Just be satisfied. Can't get no satisfaction. Mm. Okay, we're done. Keep out of... Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. Uh oh. The wild legs have returned. My arrival is ill timed. Three tells bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's hair is lost or else hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Yeah, you're all crazy. I don't even want to deal with you all. I just wanted a place to rest, maybe look at, you know, my brain, see what's going on. But no, no, you just gotta be, gotta be hanging people from trees and stuff, man. Don't threaten me, little man. It is no threat, only a warning. Lord Raedric will tolerate no threats to his kin or those who live upon his lands. Grief will not make him more docile. I want to just say, shove it up your butt. That's not an option right here. Okay, bye. Crazy person. I don't want to talk to you. Ur urgent.
Their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hands for calm. His face is partially obscured by his hood, but his hate, height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Ooh, a fight. You've got a lot of gall mocking us in your own village. We don't take ill treatment from foreigners, especially not our Darens. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! Oh, whoops. I didn't... whatever it is you think I said. We have nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. You're not gonna take that from him, are you? No, and we're not taking it from you, either. Well... What did I do to you, people? Well, whatever. It seems like you are just destined to die by my blade. I don't mean to be cutting people down for some trillish elf, but, you know, whatever. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. If they well, that is one way of putting it. I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. I better have more to say here for yourself than that. I didn't mean to drag you into this. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. So now we just murdered a bunch of mostly harmless townsfolk. Because you were a brat, and now we're learning all his life story, like, it's really hard to get invested emotionally in this character. And how exactly did you come to be here? Within ruins, those can be dangerous places for the best of times. What exactly did you find there? Remain silent. A woman must have her secrets very well. Just how did you manage to cross those three joints? It doesn't help that these people in that people in these parts remember their war with the Aider like it was yesterday. You did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah that. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. I heard the same thing. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. Alright, well, whatever. Bye. Given recent events, it's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. Well, I'll take you until I find someone better. Excellent. I shall follow you. I don't really like this guy. He's I'm here. Kind of a weird character, but um, I hate coins. Twenty CP a pop. Of 
loving it now. I'm here. Now they're now they're all naked. Great. The floorboards are sticky with spills that no one has bothered to clean. Okay. Tosca. Hail and well met. We have two rooms available. Can't offer much by way of a good meal unless you're fond of cold porridge. I'd like a room, please. The common room. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like a moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her hand snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake. The foul smell of the, dwarf's, wolf's, uh, the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face and thick droplets in your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. You called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. All right. Yes. What do you What do you have in the way? Missiles, flames. Okay, you just cast the spells. You, you keep casting them spells, bro. I'd be glad to. Villagers seem pretty nonchalant about just killing their companions. But okay, I'll take it. Okay. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. All right, we're going to reach out for her. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt in your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanged woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you, with eyes clouded in a multi-key fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. 
The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? I think I survived a Biavac. Do you know what that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? Souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Remergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Okay, so what about this thing does that, that happened to me? The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, no. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Okay. Oh, dang, what was that? Souls pass on, some say, through Adra Stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and were born into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. Okay. A watcher sees, knows what to look for, and sometimes they know a person is just by looking at them. Know where they've been in the ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owners can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. What did you mean, when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Okay. Um, I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. What happened to you? <laughs> oh, come now. Such a question. As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. 
Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her violence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. So the problem is with Lord Redrick, okay. Well, that's uh, all I need to know. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Okay. Crucible of the soul. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm a watch. Well, that is interesting. I appreciate your honesty, since I didn't have the option to lie, so, yeah. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about Watchers? Only that they're rare, uh, and that they can have unique insights into certain things, as you demonstrated. Uh oh, we gained a level again already, cool. Six points left. Uh, let's see, one in the lore, one in survival, another in the survival, another in the lore, and that's it. Four, four, four. Now I can use level two scrolls. Cool. Fighter abilities. Guardian Stance, Discipline Barrage, Confident Aim, plus 20% minimum damage, that seems alright. Let's go Confident Aim. Done. And then the Elf Wizard also gained a level. He's all in the lore. Yeah, oh, all right. Well, that's good. All right. And a level two spell. Ray of fire sounds good. A rolling flame. Now nah, let's do ray of fire. Do I get two? Oh, I get two. Rolling flame, then. All right. Done. Seventeen and a half. What? Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the door, Foreman. I'm sorry. The door, Foreman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. What are you talking the about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a Radrick at first. Uh, so maybe Radrick is also a watcher? Or maybe he's... There's something funny going on with Radrick. What's it to you?
Why am I so eager to ask people about this watcher business? It seems like something you could just keep, you know, to yourself. Whatever, let's ask him. Careful, friend. Let's not use that word around here. There'd be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radrick especially. They come through these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. Don't be so sure. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fella who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the phone. Used to be my captain during the war. Why was your headman hanged? Got involved? Someone was working with Kalsk. Plotting Radrick's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, then hang every last one of us. They took him at his word that it was him. Bound to happen sooner or later. It's not for plotting against Radrick, then for protecting me. Who's Kolsk? Someone who got tired of all the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. What does your town have against you? wrong, God. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Yeah, that's nice. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethus. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethus worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Oh, Seems that's, that's nice. no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Radric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. You can see why I was eager to leave. Well, what are you still doing here? Why don't you come join my party? Because that's clearly where we're going. No, oh, I guess. It's not giving me a join my party thing yet. Well, whatever. I, I felt like he was going to offer to join my party, but he was not really getting there very quickly. But yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of a break now, but I'll probably be back later.